Hello and welcome to episode two of Westergoss, your weekly dose of Game of Thrones chat from Team Enemy. I'm Charlotte Gunn. I'm Larry Bartley. And we've just watched episode two, season seven, Game of Thrones called Stormborn. What an episode, Larry. It was a great episode. It was. I'm quite excited. Yeah. Um, it was, a, again, a bit of an establishing episode, I reckon. Yeah, a little bit slow. A little bit slow, but we saw a lot of all of the characters, all, all but a couple of the characters. Um, so, what happened? Yeah. Uh, we had Cersei, who is finally sort of laying down her battle plan. So she's teamed up with the Tarleys, um, who are going to rebel against the Tyrells. Yeah, so that was... That was interesting. It didn't really seem like it was going to go her way. Uh, up to now, Daenerys has been holding all of the cards. She's got basically everyone on her side. And, and uh, yeah, Cersei kind of pulls a bit of a something I didn't see coming. This yeah. week. And she also has weapons to fight dragons with. Oh, yeah, her massive, her <laughs> huge bow and arrow. Crossbow things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how good they're going to be against flying dragons, but we'll see. No, they seem to have conveniently forgotten that the dragon also has scales and is not just a uh, movable I was a little bit stationary like, skull. I thought Maester Kyburn was going to show her like some evil creatures yeah. or something. It was just a I thought it was going to be more like Batman, you know, you go down into into the dungeons with all these like wicked gadgets, but uh, but no, it was not to be. Just a massive bow and arrow. Yeah. Uh, um, who else do we have? Um, Sam Tarly up in the Citadel. Yes. So he... Sam was the brave. Yeah. That's cool. He's trying to sort Jorah Mormont's grayscale out against the rules. So they had to be really quiet. It was quite gruesome watching. It was. A lot of gruesome scenes for Sam lately. Yeah. Last uh, week, if you caught it, he was fiddling around with some bedpans for ages. Um, this week, he tried to cure Jorah Mormont of his uh, grayscale in a particularly gruesome scene. Yeah. Um, and then that cut into a pie, which was uh, in Arya's inn, where, he met, where she met Hot Pie. Oh, yeah, so let's friend. talk about that. So Arya now has the crucial piece of information that she's been waiting for, which is that Jon is king of the north. He's not dead. Uh, there is hope, and she's uh, changed changed course. Yeah, so she's heading to Winterfell now. John's about to leave Winterfell, so she's going to meet Sansa presumably, and not John. Yeah, they're just doomed to never quite meet, aren't yeah. they? Well, I think it might happen eventually, but not this. What not do next you, What do you see happening with Arya next then? She's uh, well, I guess she'll arrive at Winterfell probably around the same time that Bran arrives there because he's on his way there too. Of course. Yeah. We um, didn't see Bran at this episode. No. And so they're all going to find out that Jon is a Targaryen and Jon is not going to be there. And then possibly their loyalties might shift. Oh, true. I don't know. And Littlefinger and Sansa have been left alone yeah. to keep hold of Winterfell. Jon warned him very sternly, keep your hands off my sister. Yeah. Whether he'll pay attention or not, there yet was, to be seen. There's actually like a really strong parallel between that and an episode from season one right. where Ned Stark was doing the same thing to him, like the same shot exactly against the wall. Um, it's kind of funny seeing that parallel with John now. And we heard one of the creepiest lines uh, we've heard so far from Littlefinger, which was, I loved your mother and I love your sister too, or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, He's you're gross, mate. Yeah. You're so gross. Yeah. Um, what else happened? Uh, we had... Well, Daenerys, loads of stuff with Daenerys. Right. So yes. she uh, told Varys that she's going to burn him alive if he betrays her again, uh, because he's been a bit fickle to her in the past. Uh, she met Varys, Ma man of the people, though. Yeah. Came out quite right on, like I just, you know, I do what the people want. Yeah, but also, he just chooses whatever side is good <laughs> for him, probably. Um, she also met Melisandre, which was a bit of a surprise, her turning up and being welcomed as well. Yeah. Um, so she obviously had helped Stannis, who was Daenerys' enemy, I guess, before. Yeah, um, but they have some history, family history. The red, yeah. the red. The, yeah, the, yeah. They so they what helped they out called? in the the red priest. The priest the and priest. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so they helped out in Marine when something happened. I don't know. They were nice. Her parents, I think, she was her dad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is so, not our area. So, so Melisandre was there. She's saying that um, Daenerys is possibly the prince that was promised or the princess that was promised, um, which is a bit of a shift for fans. I think book readers already knew that. Um, but yeah, it's just like prince in the language that the prophecy is in isn't gendered. So Yeah, so I think it just sort of confirms that this is John and Daenerys' race. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, probably one of the two is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you hadn't deduced that yourself already. 
Um, oh yeah, we've covered. She's on her way to Winterfell. Yeah. Sansa, do you think she'll fall for Littlefinger's spell? Well, I don't think so. I think she. John's away. She thinks she's fine. Littlefinger probably thinks he's in quite a strong position while John's away. So it's going to be sort of battle of wits, I think. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say who's going to win. Last week she was like, I know what he wants. But that's sort of mysterious. I think he wants her, doesn't he? Yeah. And he wants the, the yeah. throne. And I think he... she might marry him and then kill him. So she's got the veil Ooh, as well because yeah. he's in charge of the veil. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. Daenerys, yeah, big, big week for her. Uh, a lot of persuading people to be on her side mm -hmm. who and, and kind of convincing people of her game plan. Um, it, the episode picked up where we left off with her in the in the war room, mm -hmm. but with the small council, uh, uh, Lady Tyrell is, uh, is sort of saying, go all guns blazing with the dragons straight into King's Landing, burn everyone to death. She's kind of like, eh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Tyrion's very much on that side as well. And she says, don't listen to him. You know, I've known a lot of men with big opinions or something. Yeah. And I've always chosen to ignore them all. I've outlived them all. Yeah, yeah. Um, whether she will or not, now this kind of brings us on to the biggest moment of the week, which yeah. we get to talk about, which you will have just watched. But let's watch it again. Let's watch it again. A battle. Finally, a battle. Yeah, and a good one as well. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, Euron came good as a villain. Oh, he's such a good villain, isn't so he? So good. Such a demonic smile. Arriving on this sort of weird laddery thing, <laughs> yeah. like a tooth jaw. I don't know. It was yeah. cool. It was a good moment. Um, we've been missing a good baddie, of course, since Ramsay died. Um, so it's good to have one back. But um, so everything's kind of gone to shit a little bit for Daenerys in yeah. this, this one attack on her ship. So talk, talk me through what's gone wrong here. So right. Dornish lot. Dornish lot. So the Greyjoy fleet, which is big, it's like a thousand ships, uh, was sailing to Dawn with the Dornish people, so Ilaria Sand and her daughters. Yeah. And so they're all kind of important figures in, in Dawn. They're basically the royalty now because the king's dead. Ilaria Sand, of course, responsible for killing Cersei's daughter, Marcella. Yeah, yeah. So they're all dead. No, not all of them are dead. Um, but the fleet is probably gone because Euron sort of attacked uh, in an ambush. And now he's got Yara Greyjoy, Ilaria Sand and Tyene Sand as prisoners, and he's taken them back probably to Cersei, because last week he promised to bring her a precious gift. The precious gift, yeah. of course, and we all thought it was going to be Tyrion's head. Yeah. But in fact... Or even Gendry. Or Gendry! Oh, Gendry! <laughs> yeah. In this little boat. Yeah. Um, but so... Right, okay. Yeah. So that's where they're off to. Yeah. But now Daenerys is kind of screwed, because she needs Dawn's army to help her, and they're just stuck in Dawn, and they might not even help her now, because their, their leaders are held hostage yeah so they might be sort of forced to obey Cersei and Yara he's got Yara he's got Yara as well so all the Greyjoy fleet I think all the fleet is gone I don't really know it's hard to say at this, at this oh, stage but, we'll find out but Daenerys does still have the force that she sent to uh, Castle Rock so all of the Unsullied army has yes. gone around Westeros to the west side of it where right. Castle Rock is so that's what we're going to be seeing next week probably and at the end of that scene Theon at the end of the scene. himself, jumped in the water, left his sister to die. I think, I mean, he was sort of triggered. It was like a PTSD thing, which is yeah. really, you wouldn't maybe expect it from Game of Thrones, but it was actually quite uh, harrowing. It was. You could really see it in his face, yeah. the terror. Yeah. But um, people on Reddit are speculating about whether Gendry will come, come along with <laughs> this little boat with his ginormous <laughs> arms that have been rowing for so a the, month. The problem with the theory is that <laughs> Gendry's rowing from Dragonstone, where Daenerys currently is, and where Stannis was like five seasons ago, maybe four, I don't know. Uh, and he was going to Westeros, which is very close by, so um, he probably has arrived by this point. But, oh, um, that would be nice. It would though, be nice it? though. Just out of the there. distance. Maybe he's living on out the shore. Out of the burning ship, Gendry just comes along. <laughs> on yet, Theon. We are going to see Gendry though. Not this episode, sadly. But oh, do you know when? No, but right. it's coming this we season. It's been intel promised. Then, Larry. Yeah. Um, so that was without doubt biggest moment of the week. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for the hero of the week, which is. Unexpectedly, Samuel Tarly. Samuel. Yeah, I've kind of not held a grudge against Sam, but I've always found him quite annoying. People don't like him, do they? But you know, 
Uh, as I will often reference, it's just like no one liked Sam in Lord of the Rings either, but he was a pivotal character, very important. Where would Frodo have been without him? Where would anyone be without Samwell in, in Game of Thrones? Yeah. Absolutely nowhere. Yeah, he's discovered lots of things, and uh, the latest thing, well, he's trying to heal, draw a moment of his grayscale, which is very noble, because he could get it himself, and that would be a horrible way to die. He's a nice man. Um, he's also, he talked to the... Archmaster, who he's serving, the guy, so the guy Jim Broadbent's playing. Yeah. Um, he was saying that he couldn't do anything about the grayscale, but Sam did stuff anyway. But he also said that he's writing a history of, a com- it's called uh, The Chronicle of the Wars Following the Death of King Robert I. And Sam Tiley said, I choose something a little bit more poetic. And a lot of people are saying he would choose A Song of Ice and Fire which is what George R. R. Martin has called the series. And George R. R. Martin has often said that he kind of relates to Sam very closely and he feels like he would do a lot of the same things as him. So but maybe that's how it all ends, yeah, with Sam, Sam writing. writing the book. Yeah. be quite a nice ending. Hero of the Week. Again, very similar to Lord of the Rings, but, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, what about the Loser of the Week, Charlotte? Loser of the Week. Loser of the Week was uh, Arya getting shunned by a wolf. By her own wolf. Let's have a look. So this is Nymeria who Arya last saw, she chucked rocks at her and made her go away when she thought Cersei was going to capture her in one of the early seasons, probably season season one. one. Um, So she runs into her again and she tries to persuade her to come back to Winterfell with her and she's having none of it. Yeah. So in the the lesson there, don't throw heavy items at animals because they will not forgive you. Um, in the books, the uh, Nymeria is sort of leading a pack of wolves like we've seen in the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the books, Arya has these like wolf dreams where she can sort of be the wolf. And so she's sort I of like... What, doesn't Bran have that? Yeah, so he's got the same thing. Like they all yeah. meant to, like John as well in the books. Um, yeah. But not in the series. So it's kind of a bit of a letdown, I think, for a lot of fans because people are expecting it to be kind of a climactic moment where she's reunited and yeah. they're like a team. Um, but at the end, Arya says, that's not you about the the wolf and that's uh the showrunners have co- talked about this scene and they say that um that that is a, a call back to season one where ned stark had drawn a picture of her as like a princess marrying some lord and she was like that's not me and so the bit where she smiles at the end and says goodbye to nymeria that's sort of her being like that's all right you know that's you i know you do you're, you. you're a wolf you're yeah. not supposed to be inside but I, I expect we might see her again you know like they wouldn't have yeah why would they have brought her back if we they've anything. had it. They've had a moment now. So yeah. I reckon people um, remember who the wolf is. Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah, we'll be seeing her again. There's this little wolf here. That is a little die wolf. Is it Nymeria? Maybe. <laughs> um, shall we talk about theories, Charlotte? Yeah, we should do, shouldn't we? Yeah. So what? What? What's going on? <laughs> I think the big thing this week is. Um, how Euron found out about Yara yeah. and the Dornish trick. Is there a mole? Is there a mole in the small council? Um, I don't really... I'm not really super convinced by this theory, but it's sort of the best one this week. So the, the idea is that um, someone in Danny's small council would, would have told Euron about the expedition to Dorn, um, and that's how he found out and attacked them in the right place. And people are saying it's Elena Tyrell. Um, the reasons for that are kind of complicated, aren't they? Well, it's because all she cares about is getting Cersei. Cersei's killed her whole family. Uh, she just wants revenge. She thinks all this faffing about with the other stuff is just taking away from the fact that Daenerys has three dragons. She could just go in there and kind of end it all. 
um, that's very much her viewpoint. So the theory is that she told Euron to sort of stop all this siege stuff, stuff, other stuff. But again, it's just sort of weakening her own allies. So yeah. I don't know. I'm not sold on that one. Yeah. Personally. Yeah, like the idea that you're forcing someone's hand by setting them back. I don't know. It's really crafty. And if it works, then amazing for Lena. But I don't know. I think she is quite crafty. She is. She so remember she um, she organised the poisoning of King Joffrey and framing of Tyrion. Um, Tyrion I think still doesn't know this. No. Because uh, they're kind of friends now. But yeah, she is very. She knows what she's doing. I almost think Tyrion would forgive her for that though. Yeah, probably. I mean, crafty. got rid of Joffrey as well. Didn't yeah. It? So. <laughs> exactly. Um, other theories this week. Um, well, the prince that was promised. So this is sort yeah. of like a long running prophecy. Um, I, like you don't people don't really know if it even holds any weight because like you know prophecy is a prophecy it's like George R. R. Martin sort of tends to write these things as like a red herring to trick you into thinking certain stuff so like the prince was promised if the official line is when the red star bleeds and the darkness gathers Azor Ahai which is the prince that was promised shall be born again in smoke and salt and supposedly Azor Ahai comes and saves everyone from the white walkers or the darkness. So consult. Yeah. So people now think this could be Daenerys because she, do you remember she like burned herself and the body of Khal Drogo and the dragon eggs? I do remember that, yeah. Yeah. So that was sort of the birth in smoke and salt because it was in like this desert, I guess. Oh, and there was a comet. A bit salty, time. was it? It was a bit salty, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so now it's yeah. revealed that it could be a princess that was promised. It could be Daenerys, but... But I, I don't know, would this... I mean, there's obviously going to be one winner. Yeah, I don't think so it really matters. The, yeah, so like, oh, right, there's going to be a winner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I knew that anyway. Well, didn't know it, but suspected. Although people say that maybe it will be both of them. Don't, yeah. Don't they? Anyway, I'm rambling. Is it time for the quote of the week? I think it is, yeah. So my favourite one this week is, it's not really, I mean, it's like a sort of small exchange, but it's between Jamie Lannister and Randall Tarly's son. So Randall Tarly's son is called Dickon which is a silly name. And I think probably the showrunners thought, this is a silly name. How are we going to deal with this? I feel like other people have been called Dickon, though. Uh, someone's called Rickon. Right. So Bran's brother, who's dead, yes. uh, is called Rickon. Yes. Um, and, yeah, so Jamie goes up to him and he's like, Rickon, is it? And he's like, no, Dickon. He's like, ah, oh, yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid name. I like that. Uh, my favourite was, let me see if I can get this right, uh, Elena Tyrell saying to Daenerys, are you a sheep? No, you're not a sheep. You're a dragon. You need to be a dragon. Yeah, strong words. Yeah. Although I think that sounds like she's encouraging her to go mad, which uh, is probably not well go advised. Go mad, right? Oh, I don't think she cares what happens to Daenerys, though, does she? She mm, just yeah. wants, just wants Cersei's head. Yeah. On a spike or she's burn. Just trying to mix to things up. Um, my second favourite cl- quote of the week was when Euron came <laughs> swinging onto the ship and then grabbed Yara and went, give your uncle a kiss then. <laughs> so cheesy and wonderful. Yeah. In equal measure. Yeah. Hammy. Yeah. But kind of great. Yeah. I think the, I mean, is yeah, really You need that home. stuff in Game of Thrones. It's sort of, it happens every week, some kind of comedy moment. And it, it you know, it's good. Yeah. It just reminds us not to take it all too seriously, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> what else is going on? Um, well, we've got this lovely oh, stuff. Oh, we do, yeah. I th- yeah, that's I'm out of quotes. Oh, sorry, theories. Um, so, yeah, uh, HBO have sent us some lovely props, which you can buy this uh, wonderful mask, which I shall put on now. Um, <laughs> it comes flat pack in yeah. a... In a book like this there's a there's a lannister lion and a, a wolf and there's a also wolf. a dragon which is quite hard to put together so we've not done that one uh yeah they were a little bit hard to put together weren't they yeah. but um but worth it though i mean look at it <laughs> definitely worth it <laughs> who could it. say no to that it's brilliant um we've also got one of these which is a mini iron throne it's actually very heavy yeah it's very special um it's uh, a seven inch iron throne replica um and so yeah, all of this stuff is available on an HBO shop. Uh, a awesome. raven. A little, yeah, three-eyed raven and a, is that a hound helmet, I think? With a little moving... Hound helmet, yeah. Moving hound helmet. Lovely. Loads of stuff. If you want to geek out further, yeah. head to the HBO shop. Yeah. Um, 
And this sort of brings us to... Next week on Thrones. Yeah, next week on Thrones. The trailer's released already, obviously. Let's have a look. I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and I will. The war's already begun. I've drawn first blood. Thursday will be ready. They know we're coming. So that was quite fast paced. Shall we have a look at it in sort of slow, slow mo? Let's so we can see. break it down. Yeah, yeah. So first thing is Euron coming to King's Landing with his prisoners, which we know is Yara Greyjoy and uh, the Sands, and then bringing them to Cersei and bowing to Cersei and presenting her with her gift, and presumably earning her trust. Um, if she needs another nutter. Yeah. <laughs> she's got one, it seems. Then we've got Cersei saying that she's drawn the first blood in the war, um, which she seems to be quite proud of. Yeah. Um, Presumably that is that, I reckon Mrs. That, Dawn? Yeah, I reckon, yeah, killing killing whoever. What's, what's she called? Dawn uh, Lady? Ilaria Sand. Ilaria Sand. And her daughter is called Tyene Sand. Right, okay. Yeah. You think, you think, but do, you, do we think that's what, what she was referring to? Yeah, I, I guess so. I don't know. I don't know what she'll do with the prisoners because it's quite useful having hostages. It is, but does, does anyone care enough about them? I think the Dornish probably would, because like, yeah. they seem to be leading them. But like, Dawn is such a confusing storyline in the show because they've not really paid enough attention to it. So like, all we ever saw of Dawn was like that courtyard with a little fountain yeah. in it. <laughs> that is the whole of. <laughs> That's Dawn. the kingdom. So um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to know if people actually like them or not. But yeah, I think she might use them. She might kill them. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what next? What next? Uh, we've got. Uh, Grey Worm leading the Targaryen fleet to Castle Rock and then having lots of fighting in Castle Rock. Um, so there's like arches on the walls and uh, like clashes in the, in the courtyards. I think Jamie might be there. I don't know. But if he is, he could be in a lot of danger. I think there could be a battle between him and Grey Worm next Although, week. Although one thing we didn't mention was that Grey Worm had a bit of... Yeah. But a lovely time with yeah. uh, Melisande. Melisande. Yeah. It was like a sort of um, farewell treat. Farewell treat for the Basically. man off to war. But um, but he said before he didn't care about anything, now he's in love with her. Yeah. Is it going to make him a weaker fighter? Is, you know, yeah. is, is it, was that the point of that scene? Was it, you know, I imagine one of those two are now going to die. Possibly, yeah. Because... You I know, think the only way that they could use, nice they'd have to like bring Missande and be like, well, "I've got your Missande. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do anything more. <laughs> Surrender, or whatever." If you want to see her boobs again, <laughs> yeah. Like I don't see how they can like really employ that as a weakness against him. But maybe it was just like a nice thing for him to have because he's always a bit sad. He is, yeah, he's sad. Or just solemn, not sad, just just quite. Sort Rally of Ritchie, on the other hand. Rally Ritchie is a lovely fellow. Very nice man. <laughs> Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, we've got Sansa by Winterfell's Heart Tree. Yeah, explain this to me. The tree thing. Right. So the trees. Um, if you remember, like it back in season one, no one's really prayed pray to a heart tree in a while. But yeah, it's sort of like where the old gods are, and all the northern houses pray to the old gods, and like all the southern ones have new gods, which is like the seven. Let's not get into them. Um, too many gods. Too many gods. But uh, yeah, the heart trees are where. It's sort of where people think they're communicating with the old gods, but then actually it's something to do with the children of the forest, and that's where Bran was able to sort of like teleport into them and like see stuff happening through the heart tree. So it could be that Bran has arrived at Winterfell and is sort of like communing with the heart tree, or Sansa's Sansa just praying there and seeming a bit upset. Right. But the scene we see of her is like half a second long, so you can't really tell. Okay, something about but she's, a tree. She's there. Something something religious is happening there, and then finally. Jon Snow going to Dragonstone <gasps> with the moment Davos. we've yeah. all been waiting for. It's been like seven seasons coming. I don't know if we ever like thought that it was going to happen initially, but it does feel like a lot of hype now is building up to Jon Snow and Daenerys. Finally meeting. Will they get on? Will they, you know, fall in love? Will they recognise you? The thing about this is, everyone needs to remember... They're related. She, she is his aunt. Yeah, but she, she doesn't know that, does she? No, Nobody, he doesn't know it either. Exactly. It could be like a It's like the plot of, of Star every... Wars. every <laughs> Thing ever. Yeah, Luke and Leia, <laughs> Daenerys and Jon Snow. Yeah, right. Joining the canon. Um, I reckon that's how it's going to go. 
exactly what that. a love story. Yeah, and then they'll realise and be like, oh, awkward. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm in two minds about it. I think it shouldn't happen. But No, it's gross. Also, it, it would just be kind of boring if it happened. It would be like sort of typical Thrones. Or not, not just typical. Yeah, it never really is typical Thrones, so that probably won't happen, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's next week. I'm excited. I yeah. feel like that it was another good establishing episode, but with a hint of Thrones. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of violence at, at the, the end. end. Yeah. yeah, so it's sort of very like, visceral. It was. Yeah. It was good. So we will see you here next week. Um, we hope you enjoyed the episode. We hope we've shed some light on, on some stuff. On some stuff, and uh, yeah, we'll be back next week for another episode of Westergoss. Bye.